Hello everyone and welcome to this Unit 5. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Lydia Leon and I am the Deputy Di Director of Operational Centers of PMT Madrid, the public transport operator of the city. In the next slides, I will present you the EMG strategy for the introductions of eBuses. EMG was created in 1947 and it's fully owned by Madrid City Council. It's a 24-7 service all year round. EMG operates and manages the home network of public urban buses in Madrid City and also provides other public mobility services, parking facilities, tow truck, the public e-bike sharing system Vitimat and the cable car system. The figures of EMG Madrid in 2021. EMG is the reference of surface mobility in the city of Madrid. We have 2,100 buses and almost 2,000 are put on service daily. It counts with more than 9,000 employees, 5 operational centers or bus depots and 7 business lines. To start with, our field renewal strategy goes to have a fully green fleet at the end of this year. So, in 2023, there won't be any diesel bus. The strategic decision that made this change possible was taken in 2010 when the company decided not to buy any more diesel buses. That year, our Sentinel depot was opened, the first 100% compressed natural gas depot in Europe. Our aim is removing all diesel buses, but also to read the challenge of the very ambitious purchase processes to renew the fleet, more than 700 e buses by 2027. Some key aspects of our electrification strategy are the following. The choice of charging strategy. For us, the solution goes through charging in the depot at night by plugging or inverted pantographs. We have a pilot project with five induction buses based on opportunity charging, but we have discarded the solution for our fleet in our city. Another point would be that the fleet renewal strategy must be aligned with the evolution of existing technology and resources, and very important, the depot adaptations to new technology. And what to consider when electrifying routes and buses? For routes, the demand, the kilometers of that specific bus line, the schedule, distance between bus depots ahead of the line, and orography as well. For buses, the size of the length, from 8 meters, microbuses or up to an articulated one, going to cover, and the different factors for covering this rate. Weather, climatology, the service requirements, may be set by the public transport authority, the hygiene and ventilation conditioning system, systems that may reduce the range by even 20% according to our, to our experience, and also which are the estimated versus operative values of this specific bus, bus line or service. At the end of, of this year, we will have 21 fuel electrified lines in service. Regarding the electrification model, this is how we do in EMT. So, we have the fleet provider providing the bus and the chargers, but nowadays we buy only the bus and apart the chargers and pantograph, because our aim is to have a universal charging system for all the devices. The initial training and the maintenance during warranty period, and that is arranged by supply contracts. And then we have the energy provider by a services contract. And what do we do? Well, at EMT, we are the bus operator, we maintain the fleet and the charging infrastructure, and we train our workforce. Something pretty important is to adapt the bus depot in order to have the charging infrastructure, because you need to take into account the coexistence of different technologies at the same time, and the training of the, of the workforce in this ele electric propul propulsion as well. At this point, we are training our staff in two levels. We have authorized workers to look out if needed and qualified, who are able to undertake more complicated, more complicated tasks. We don't work on the batteries right now. We cover these issues with warranties and to warranty the fleet supply. Now, for instance, in EMT Madrid, we have three different depots with different capacities for e buses Caravanchel up to 200, Juan Carrad up to 50 e buses and Entrevillas Depot, which is involved into a very ambitious project to add hydrogen buses as well. Let's continue with the example of our Caravanchel Depot. 
It was opened in 2006 and it was designed for diesel buses with a total capacity of 450 units. With the arrival of CNG technology, we needed to build a compression station for CNG, which was later on extended. Caravanchel was the first depot with e-buses. In 2007, 20 minibuses were put into service. All of them were renewed two years ago with a new model, with different batteries, batteries technology and more autonomy, of course. Nowadays, we are working on this depot adaptation to allocate 200 e-buses. This project has three phases. We completed step one and now we are facing the phase two. The objective is to have two technical platforms to share 150 e-buses with inverted bundles and an integrated charging system. In addition, we are working on smart charging too. Another ambitious project in our electrification strategy is La Lipa. This depot is an old one and nowadays we are preparing it to be completely remodeled. It is being adapted and it will be the biggest roof e-bus e depot in Europe. It will use inverted panels with a capacity for more than with a capacity for more than 300 e-buses, including 20 articulated. This new personal center is designed under the modern operation standards of EMT and with sustainable criteria, maximizing the integration within the surrounding environment. Of course, this implies a very big investment. Some of the characteristics of this new depot. It will be a building with almost zero energy balance with a photocatalytic saving and reductions of greenhouse gas emissions, minimizing the impacts on the neighborhood. So, from our experience, technical evolution causes obsolescence. We saw this with the Zebra batteries, for instance. Charger and vehicle performance depends on weather conditions. The importance of a smart charging, as it is not the same to charge 5 buses than 20, 40 or even 100 at the same time. There are significant differences in the vehicle performance between different providers, which may be increased by temper temperature conditions both in the vehicle and in the charger. Also, the battery life decreases over time, and there are great differences in autonomy compared with other technologies, for instance, CNT buses. So, to conclude, Electrification must be done according to the characteristics of the bus network and the local conditions. We need to choose the optimal charging model considering the local context. For EMT, we chose overnight charging with inverted panels and plug-in charging with the exception. We need to design and adapt depots to guarantee the availability of enough power supply, which must be efficient and reliable. Meaning that you need more than one depot with charges in case in case there is energy failure. Some key aspects to consider are the maintenance of the facilities and workforce skills. Charging of buses must be warranted efficiently and reliable, so you need high power of course, but this power may be reduced to the minimum by planning properly the charging processes. Therefore, the electrification of the fleet is feasible and it's very linked with a smart charging. Public-private cooperation is key and finally, the relevance of political support which makes all the way. And that's all, thank you all, thank you so much and goodbye.